This tutorial is all about the molecules which are found in fats and oils and how they can be converted, for example, into soap. This builds upon what we learned in, I think it was C1, where we learned about esters, and also in C1 about unsaturation. There's not a lot of difference between an oil and a fat only that an oil is liquid at room temperature and a fat is solid at room temperature, but they both have essentially the same structure. They're all esters made by a reaction between a kind of triple alcohol called a triol. This is ethane 1, 2, 3 triol or glycerol. Ester of that with three what are called fatty acids or long chain carboxylic acids. You don't especially need to know this bit for C6, but essentially when an alcohol reacts with an organic acid, we get what's called an ester plus water. Except this one has got three ester groups in. The ester group is the C double bond O, O group. You'll likely have heard of the terms saturated and unsaturated fats. Animal fats and some vegetable oils are what are called saturated. That means that they have only single carbon-carbon bonds within their structure. These are essentially not very good for us. However, the fatty acids in some vegetable oils are what are called unsaturated. And this means they've got double bonds, at least one double bond, between some of their carbon atoms. Now, these unsaturated oils or fats uh, tend to be better for us, and some of them are called monounsaturated, which means that they've only got one double bond in them. Others are called polyunsaturated, which means they've got more than one or many double bonds in them. Now, these vegetable oils are often unsaturated, which means that they will uh, have double bonds in their structure. You need to be able to recognise the structure of a saturated and an unsaturated fat. Here on the left we have saturated fat. Uh, that's because there are no double bonds on these fatty acid parts of the molecule. Whereas on the right we've got fatty acids here which would go on to make an, an ester or a, a vegetable oil. And each of these have got, for example, one or two carbon-carbon double bonds in. So when these form um, esters, when these form oils, then they will be unsaturated ones. This one, a monounsaturated. This one, a polyunsaturated one. So which is this, saturated or unsaturated? If you have a look at the structure, no sign of any carbon-carbon double bonds. This one is saturated. Here's another. Is this one saturated or unsaturated? Well, if you look on the chains here, we've got these carbon-carbon double bonds. So this one is definitely polyunsaturated. Another vegetable oil. Is this saturated or unsaturated? first glance it appears to be saturated, but when we look at the third fatty acid which makes up this vegetable oil, we can see that this one is monounsaturated. And finally a fourth one, is this saturated or unsaturated? Well we can see that this one has got a double bond here, a double bond here, and a double bond here. So this one again is an unsaturated oil or fat. In C1, when we learnt about alkanes and alkenes, we learnt that we could tell the difference between them by using a reagent called bromine or bromine water. Well, we're going to revisit this because this same reagent can be used to test to find out whether a fat or an oil is saturated or unsaturated. Bromine water is orange in colour. If you shake it with an unsaturated compound, in other words, with a carbon-carbon double bond, it becomes colourless because the bromine atoms add across that double bond to form what's called a 
dibromo compound. It's a form of a addition reaction. If however you shake it with a fat or oil and there's no colour change, this means there's no double bond in there and what you have is a saturated fat. So on the left we have the result for a saturated fat or oil, no change to the bromine water. On the right we have the result for an unsaturated fat or oil. Here the bromine water has been decolorized because the bromine atoms have joined across each side of the double bond to form a colourless dibromo compound. Next we're going to cover how margarine is manufactured. Margarine is manufactured using hydrogen gas and vegetable oils. The problem with the vegetable oils used to make margarine is that they're liquid at room temperature and margarine needs to be a solid at room temperature. For this reason vegetable oils are sometimes reacted with hydrogen gas. A nickel catalyst is used to speed up the reaction and a slightly raised temperature of 60 degrees. And this reaction, which is called hydrogenation, adds a hydrogen molecule across the unsaturated double bond to make it saturated. In this way, an unsaturated oil or fat can be made into a saturated oil or fat, which is more likely to be a solid at room temperature. The next part of this topic is again familiar. We're looking at emulsions, which we learnt about again in C1. Emulsions are special kinds of mixtures which don't separate on standing. Recall that a mixture of oil, like this vegetable oil, and water do not mix. However, if we add a substance called an emulsifier that we might find, for example, in egg or in mustard. This can cause the oil and the water to become joined together and not to separate. Oil and water you see are immiscible liquids, that means they do not mix. But emulsifier will help them to mix. And you get an emulsion when there are tiny droplets of one liquid suspended in another, yet they are so small that they do not settle out and often an emulsifier helps this to happen. Examples of tiny droplets of oil in water would be milk or E45 lotion. Whereas an example of a water in oil emulsion would be butter or E45 cream. Remember that emulsifying molecules work by having a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic end to the molecule. The hydrophilic end is able to make attractions to water. The hydrophobic end is made able to make attractions to oil. In this way it acts as a bridge and holds the water and the oil together stopping them from separating. Finally in this topic the use of sodium hydroxide in order to make soaps from natural fats and oils using what's called the saponification reaction. In the olden days soap used to be made by boiling up wood ash with water to make an alkali and then heating this with animal fat or tallow. Nowadays vegetable oils are used such as olive oil or palm oil and heated with a strong alkali such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. This splits the vegetable oil up into two parts, glycerol and the sodium salt of the fatty acid, which is known as soap. Such a reaction involves the breaking of bonds in the oil molecule. And this kind of reaction is called hydrolysis. A hydrolysis reaction is when the elements of water are used to break bonds in a compound. Commercially this is done by all manner of companies including in Nottingham Alliance Boots in Beeston. This hydrolysis reaction to make soap is called saponification.